Talking with Topher is sponsored by SlowdownClothing.BigCartel.com, New Hampshire Vape Gallery, and NaturalBossNH.com. More on that later. Let's get into episode 95. Talking with Topher. Talking with Topher. Talking with Topher. What is happening, TWT fans? It is so good to be back. That's right. It's Monday, January 24th, 2022, and it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, man. How is everybody's week, weekend? How's it going out there? I just wanted to check in on all of you. I do have to say that my week went really, really well. Um, But before I get into any of that, Let's start off by saying thank you. I want to say thank you to all my subscribers. You really do keep me coming back here week after week, and I greatly, greatly appreciate you. Uh, keep sharing, rating, and commenting. Um, just a huge thank you to all of you out there. If you are new to the podcast, that's right. You watching, you listening, you, you stopping by, well, hit that subscribe button. Um, set the alarms if you want to know when all the new podcasts upload, rate, review, and leave comments in the comment section. Yes, down below, put your comments, all right? I want to hear from each and every single one of you out there checking out the podcast every week. Uh, another way to get involved with the podcast is T-A-L-K-I-N with Topher at gmail.com. That's talking with Topher at gmail.com. Uh, put slow down in the subject line and there is still an opportunity out there for three individuals to get some free slow down merch. So put slow down in the subject line, uh, put your story, someone you, uh, a story that you think needs to be heard. Uh, maybe you're looking for advice. Uh, maybe you just want to say hello, put all of that in the body. Send it on over to T A L K I N with Topher at gmail.com. That's talking with Topher at gmail.com. And then, of course, I'm on social media Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. Again, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. I'm on there every week, almost all week, trying to give you content throughout the week. And again, that's Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. Every single handle is different because none of it was set up for this. Uh, so maybe one day I'll be able to change it. But until then, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. And now with all that out of the way, what's happening, everybody? Huh? I do have to say that my week went really, really well. Um, and uh, I'm just excited. Uh, I'm sick of the cold. I definitely am tired of the static electricity. I don't know if anybody else is feeling that. But boy, oh boy. And then I find out that uh, supposedly, um, you know, you should keep moisture in your house, uh, which I've never done in my life. Um, but they're saying that it needs to be at like 18 to 25 percent humidity in the house. And it helps with uh, dry nose, congestion, uh, sleeping at night. Um, and it also said that it protects your house. Now, I didn't look much into this like everything that I do, but I was actually wondering, how does it ruin your house? If you don't have moisture in your house, isn't that a good thing? I was just like, I don't understand what this means. I should probably have investigated it before bringing it up. But hey, I don't know if anybody else out there has heard anything about this. So... I don't know. Leave me a comment. You let me know. All right. You can do that right in the bottom there in the comments underneath the video. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was really interesting to, um, you know, find out that you should have moisture in your house in the winter. For some reason, it helps something. Now, I don't know if that means that it has to deal with the electricity or the actual structure of the house. Because um, <clears throat> my wife shows me this and I'm like, well... How is it damaging my house? That's what I want to know. I'll have to do some digging. But let's see. Let's start off with the week roundup, right? Uh, Tuesday, awesome day. Just an awesome day. Got up on time. 
um, uh, uh, got everything done that I needed to. Um, I, I, I got to push some weights. I've been doing a lot of walking backwards. So Tuesday is when I started it. Um, I've paced it out. I got six backwards steps from my kitchen counter to uh, the basement door. Uh, so I do that while I'm listening to a podcast or waiting for something to get done. Um, and then at work, there's two spots where I do it. There's out back where I eat lunch. That one is about six spaces um, from door frame to door frame. And then inside the shop, uh, from the chair all the way to the window, is 12 steps. So I've got three different spots that I stand around at and do basically nothing. Uh, not not in the shop, of course. I'm always moving in the shop. But when I'm standing around listening to a podcast, I'm not moving. So now I'm moving. I'm moving backwards. Excuse me. I'm moving backwards. And this is all because of the uh, knees over toes. Uh, gentleman, I wish I could remember his name. He was recently on uh, Rogan, and then not even a day or two later, he was on Ben Grinfield's podcast, uh, which I felt was a deeper dive into his actual um, uh, structure of everything that he's doing. Um, I felt like we got to know him on Rogan, and I got to know his uh, program um, uh, on Ben Greenfield a lot better. They really took a deep dive into it. And one of the things that he said that you can start with is just walking backwards. A, a hundred steps backwards is a thousand steps forward. So I am now trying to do at least a hundred to 200 steps backwards. One, because my knee was really hurting me last week. Um, I, don't know how, but somehow injured it in class uh, by standing. So it's fine. But doing this over the course of uh, the week, last week, really helped my knee. It was pretty amazing. I do have to say, you get some weird feelings in some spots uh, around the knee, up the thigh, and down the calf that I've never had before. But those subsided three to four days later. So uh, that just shows me that I was using something I've never used before. And it just had to get used to the movement. But I will have to say, uh, you know, not to jump too far ahead. But this morning, my knee was feeling the best it's ever felt. Now, I don't know if this is all in my brain. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to keep working at it. There's a lot more workouts involved in it. Um, but I'm going to start with everything that I can do without buying anything extra. And, uh, I'm going to take it from there. So I got, I got some angled wood I can use to prop my heel up and do some of those exercises that he shows on his Instagram. Um, and also, uh, um, I'm going to be walking backwards a lot more. Um, and really getting into that because I felt a tremendous difference in my, uh, in my knee. So that's knees over toes on Instagram. And I apologize for not knowing his name, but a lot of great stuff. Um, and it really, I, th I think it's really going to change the way we think about, uh, one, knees going over toes in any workout, and also I think it's going to show us all that we can strengthen uh, all these uh, parts and ligaments that, um, you know, a lot of people have had trouble with uh, over years and years and years with knee injuries and all this other stuff. Um, I think we're going to see a tremendous difference in people getting injured. I think it's going to be an amazing thing. Uh, but yeah, I went into work, uh, started doing that. Uh, real, it was pretty busy, but not too busy. I mean, it's January. We're, we're not that busy. This is like our slow month. Um, you know, every retail has a slow month and, uh, January, February turns out to be right around our, our slow time, which is not bad. 
get to get a lot of cleaning done. I have to do a lot of rearranging. I've mentioned on here multiple times that uh, my juice companies have downsized, eliminated, or relabeled and reconfigured new things uh, to fit more into um, whatever we need it to in order to ship it to uh, stores. So, you know, so everybody's making adjustments so that that can happen. Um, I got my orders done. And then, um, you know, Wednesday I wake up, uh, got to go to jujitsu. I feel like I was about 10 or 15 minutes late on Wednesday. Um, yeah, I just, ah, man, I, I'm just a lazy butt. I'm just lazy. I'm lazy. What can I say? You know, I get out of my bed. I walk over to my alarm at six o'clock in the morning while it's ringing. I either hit snooze or dismiss. And then I put, I put the damn thing back under my pillow and I crawl in the bed. I can't make this stuff up. Everybody. This is bullshit. That's what it is. I am just being a lazy cunt. And I have no problem calling myself that or having anybody tell me that I am because I can't deny what I'm being, you know, and it's very, it's something I can control and I choosing not to for some reason. And that's what I need to get down to the bottom of. I keep telling myself I deserve more sleep. This is good. But at the end of the day, I'm not doing what I want to be doing. What I want to be doing is I want to be getting up at six o'clock in the morning, every morning, I want to be productive. I want to be back on that treadmill. I want to be lifting weights, and I am just not giving myself enough time. So I don't know what to do about that. Um, I'm thinking uh, getting up at 5, and then, um, you know, maybe I got that little bit of extra before 6, so I can kind of play around with that and then get up. And then maybe I'll be able to stay on that path. And then it's like, well, I go to bed at midnight. So if I'm going to bed at midnight and I'm getting up at five, you're looking at maybe four and a half hours of sleep. And they already said that that's not enough. You know, six is decent. If you're going to keep running, they say that's not too bad. But if you start coming under uh, five hours of sleep, um, it's, it's really, really bad for you. So I uh, sleep is important. I don't get enough of it, but I just don't feel like I can. I have to keep moving. I have to keep grinding because if I don't, you know, things are not going to get done and I could fall behind and I, I have to get ahead of, uh, where I believe we're going to be, um, you know, it, it, in a couple months, maybe a couple weeks, maybe a couple years. I don't know. But I don't think that, um, uh, uh, I do not believe that you can stand still right now. You can't not be taking care of everything that you need to be taking care of in order to uh, put yourself in a better financial spot, put yourself in a better, better mental spot, in a better physical spot today um, because we've just got so much going on um, that could uh, completely throw you off course if you are not taking any, taking care of any one of those three today. Um, I just believe that. Uh, so, you know, went to class Wednesday morning, and um, what had happened was uh, we were doing stand-up, and when we did stand-up, I got – uh, pulled to the side and I used my left leg to stop myself um, like you're supposed to. And when I did that, I got this deep, deep burning in my knee. I, it was like almost instantaneous. Uh, never, nobody touched me. That's the crazier part. I'm just like, oh, okay, now I'm chalking this up to my age, but I also don't do anything really to help protect my knees. So that's my fault. Um, but class was great. We had a great time there, you know, got to get here, take care of everything at the house. Uh, uh, then, you know, and then of course, always editing on Wednesdays and then getting it up for you. That was super fun. Uh, exported the whole video and then I go and I'm checking things 
and somehow I moved something around and it split the video and the sound. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. Let me fix this, re-export it, right? And then um, that finishes and I'm scrolling through the video looking at all my timestamps and everything else so I can type everything up, right? Because this is 6.30 at night, almost 7. And the whole end of the podcast was all scrambled. <laughs> so whatever I moved adjusted the whole like back half of the podcast. And I did not find out until I was actually uploading it to YouTube. So I had to cancel that, delete it, re-export the audio and the uh, video again uh, <laughs> and then, uh, I finally got everything, uh, uploaded and, uh, descriptions done, all the timestamps done, uh, by 12 o'clock, uh, actually it was like 1130. I think I had finally finalized everything. So just before, uh, Thursday morning, um, I finally got everything done, uploaded, edited description, uh, for all of you, and I'm telling you, I am my worst enemy. I am my own worst enemy. It's so silly how um, I get in my own way all the time, um, all the time. And I'm just like, if I just paid more attention or if I wasn't rushing, um, you know, uh, I probably would have only done this once, so... Super, super fun Wednesday, though, you know. Uh, then then Thursday shows up. I go to Rick's class uh, Thursday morning in Plastow. It was phenomenal. Uh, we had a really decent class. It was like six of us there, so it was a nice uh, 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 group of three there. Uh, I mean, there was six of us, so there was three groups. And it was just an amazing class, you know. We had some more stand-up. We were working uh, uh, some more of the... Oh, my God, what were we doing? Side control, neon belly. Uh, we were doing, like, Kimuras. Um, So all kinds of great work um, uh, at, at Rick's class in Plastow, New Hampshire. Uh, uh, a Baldo showed up from Derry. That was cool. I love it when the Derry people show up in Plastow. It always makes it fun um, to see their faces uh, uh, there. And then, uh, of course there was somebody that showed up. I believe he was originally from Rick's school, but he showed up for the first time in two years. So he was happy to be back on the mats. You know, um, it's always, it's always nice to see returning faces. Anyways, I didn't quite remember him, but he, I, he vaguely looked familiar to me. Um, but that's, that's neither here nor there. It's just, it's, it's a great story when, you know, somebody does something, they have whatever gets in the way. I believe this to be a COVID thing and life in general after that. Um, but two years off the mats, he comes back and, you know, he's just going for it. And that's amazing. That's great because you can come back. You don't have to, like, if you are trying it and you were a white belt and you were just like, ah, and you left, guess what? You can always come back. You can always come back. If you get bit by the bug again, you can always come back in, you know? So I go to, I leave there, go to work, right? Go to the New Hampshire Vape Gallery. And then um, it, was a, it was a pretty, pretty uh, great day, you know? Uh, not too many complications. I got, a, I got one angry person. And it wasn't really like, I mean, I was more astonished at the fact that she was asking me uh, to return something that was over a month old and had been regularly used. Regularly. Yeah, I can't speak any day. Um, but I was like, what's happening here? Like, I can't, I can't take it back. Look, all right. Let me be upfront with everybody. You buy something from a smoke shop or a vape shop, it's a final sale. Always and forever. Always has been, always will be. 
That's the way smoke shops, vape shops, tobacco depots, whatever, what, wherever, convenience stores, most of the products in those places, if they have to do with cigarettes, nicotine, vaping, uh, rolling papers, smoking accessories, those are all final sales. You cannot return that stuff. Technically, I believe, to be correct, that... Alcohol is pretty much a final sale, too. You can't bring it back. You know what I mean? So when someone brings a, a 510 cartridge battery into the store and is like, hey, this broke and I want to return it. And I'm like, well, how long ago did you buy it? A month ago. Oh, should you be? Su-? I was like, that's actually a pretty good life for a 510 battery. You know, it's not like it was one of the super expensive ones, but it's not like it was one of the cheap ones. It was one in the mo- in the middle. But here's the thing. They're, they're only good for so many uses, and if you're using it every day and you're charging it every night or every day, it's going to die. There is not a lithium-ion battery out there that will survive X amount of charges. Every battery is different. Every uh, every cartridge battery is different. Every mod battery is different. They're all different. It's only going to depend on you. And the one thing that I can tell everybody is, is if you are buying those devices and you are not charging them first, you're lucky to make it even a month. I'm not trying to be rude to people. I'm not trying to be up upsetting anybody. I have to ask the questions. Do you use your cell phone charger? You do. Well, you ruin the device. You can't use anything over an amp to charge your devices. Our cell phones are two and a half to three amps now to charge our devices. So guess what? That's a rapid charge. It's too much for... The batteries, that's any battery. That's your pod device, your mods, your 510 cartridge batteries. Any vaping battery on the market, you want it on a slow charge. So I tell all my customers, plug it into a TV, plug it into a laptop. Do not use your cell phone block. Very, very bad for them. So because of that, uh, you know, I'm asking these questions of her. And she doesn't want to answer me. She's getting upset. She says I should be able to take it back. Uh, (laughs) We're not Walmart, okay? And you don't have a receipt or any packaging. So what are you returning? You know what I mean? Like, I don't understand why people don't get this. But even if I wanted to take it back for you and give you a new device, it would have to be within, like, the first 24 hours. Right, Because if you're going to have a manufacturer defect, it's going to be right out of the box. It's going to be right out of the box. You may not, you know, a n- number of reasons why it wouldn't work. But right out of the box, yeah, I'm going to take it back. I'm going to switch it out for you because now I got the box. I can call the distributor. I can do my, I can do my job now, right? But when you're trying to return a device with nothing else... I mean, what are we doing here? You could have bought that anywhere. You think I'm the only person selling this particular battery? So I'm trying to ask her the questions, and she just won't answer. She's getting upset. And then I was like, well, you know, that is a really good life expectancy for that battery. And uh, she was, I mean, she just was not having it. She wasn't having it, and so she left. And that's fine. I have no problem with that because I know that what I did was not wrong. So that's how that went down. Uh, The rest of the day was fine. You know, got some new juices in. Got those up on the shelf. That's right, that Candy King is amazing. That bubblegum, the new bubblegum candy line is great. Um, So that's up on the shelf now. I made room for the other new juices that I was going to make on Friday. I mean that I was going to make. 
I set up the case for the new juices that I thought were going to be in on Saturday. They didn't show up, so hopefully they'll be there today. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, nothing crazy going on in the shop, uh, regular business as usual. Like I said, I've been doing a lot of walking backwards while, you know, waiting for food to cook, waiting for customers to come in the store, just like I used to do squats and push-ups. I mean, you got to keep moving. You can't sit. You just can't. I cannot sit, stand still. Even at my house, once my wife goes to bed, I'm like, I'm just going to go stand. I got to get off this fucking couch because if I don't, I just fall asleep. And I know it's bad for you. And you're not actually getting sleep at that point. I don't believe you are because whenever I wake up from being on the couch, it is not like I feel rested. It's not. It's always like, ugh, I fell asleep on the couch. Although, you know, having a newer couch makes it nicer because uh, you don't wake up in so much pain. Slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. That's slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. Not sure how to spell that. It's right here at the bottom of the screen or in the description underneath the video. Click that link and get this cool shit, man. Look at this winter jacket. Absolutely amazing. That's a giant pocket for your phone. It's for snowboarding, skiing, any winter weather sport you are doing it's just a beautiful jacket and you can get them they're available right now 120 bucks what a deal on that beautiful jacket i mean they got brand new skateboard decks this crazy uh i think it's an iguana and a and a snail all whacked out on juice and joints they got the octopus skate deck um they had their, uh, I think it was the Gorilla one was still left over. Uh, they got the brand new socks. I love these. I got to get me some shocks. Ugh. I got to get me some socks and a jacket. I'm telling you. Of course, their embroidering on their hats are amazing. They just came out with the Grinder Monkey Snapback. That's the new edition hat. Um, the leggings. Uh, they got two new designs. Uh, of course, you got your beach towels, your uh, board shorts, which are going to be great. We're getting ready for spring. At least I am mentally. Um, <laughs> but we still have the cold to deal with. So you can still get the crew neck sweatshirt or the heavyweight hoodie. Those are both still available today. Um, but you can get all of this stuff here at slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. That's slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. Not sure how to spell it. It's right here at the bottom of the screen. Click the link in the description below the video. New Hampshire Vape Gallery is located at 180 Lafayette Road, Seabrook, New Hampshire, down the street from Home Depot and next to Smoke Rings, where we are open seven days a week from 10.30 to 8 p.m. And you can use cash in our store. Um, you can also give us a call 603-814-4171. I've told you there's new products coming. Uh, that's right. Curious is on the way. Uh, new candy King bubble gum is already on the shelves and I've got more to come, uh, coming into this new year, uh, more flavored juices. I'm looking at, I got more desserts coming on the salt side. So we are upping our game across the board. That's right. All the new hemp products, THO, uh, THCO, THCP, HHC, all on the way. Super excited for all these new products in this new year. And you're going to be able to get all of these products at New Hampshire Vape Gallery. That's right. New Hampshire Vape Gallery is located at 180 Lafayette Road, Seabrook, New Hampshire, down the street from Home Depot and next to Smoke Rings, where we're open seven days a week from 1030 to 8 p.m. You can give us a call, 603-814-4171. And as always, I look forward to seeing you there. NaturalBossNH.com. That's N-A-T-U-R-A-L-B-O-S-S-N-H.com. I love these organic products. They are amazing. My neck, no more dry skin. Thank you, Salve.
Um, I haven't had a chance to go get the beard oil yet, so I still don't know what that's like, but I know it's an amazing product from the people that I've talked to. They still have a body balm and, of course, your lip balm uh, to keep your lips moist this winter instead of cracking and bleeding. That's never any fun. Uh, they still have the foot and body soak. Feeling salty, huh? How about feeling rosy foot and bath soak? Uh, discounted for 6 bucks while supplies last. Yes, so go to naturalbossnh.com and buy one or all six of these products today. Friday and Saturday, I'm going to put them together because they really, uh, they kind of blended. I mean, uh, you know, I think Friday I woke up. Okay, so Friday I woke up late. And this time was because I shut off my alarm. That was fantastic. So great. So great when you accidentally do that before you go to bed. I was turning down the volume, and my fat thumb must have hit the alarm volume, which, therefore, uh, I did not wake up on time. I woke up at, like, 6.30. I uh, had to rush around. I needed to go to a couple places before I went to work. Um, I Got to work at 10.05, um, which to me is late, okay? I know we don't open till 10.30. I like to be up at the shop, 9.45, uh, the latest. It gives me just enough time to get everything cleaned up and prepared and ready and mm, for me to get ready for the work day. You know what I mean? You got to settle yourself in. I hate getting there so late that when you open, like, the first customer right off the bat, and, you're like, you haven't even had a chance to absorb um, just the start of the workday. You know, you're kind of like, ah, oh, I got to get it all ready, and customer. And you're like, holy shit. I don't like that, but it happens from time to time. Uh, I got really excited because Saturday was the first oil change uh, for the Infinity. Yeah. Uh, I always get excited. Uh, I don't know about anybody else out there, but when maintenance is done to a vehicle, when at least when I used to do it myself, now I, I have somebody else do it while I'm working because that's the way life goes. But, um, after an oil change, I, I get, I always feel the difference in the vehicle. You know, that it's like the, it's like the vehicle wakes up. And uh, I was excited because it was going to be uh, the first oil change uh, that I'm doing to the car. So Honda did it, and, you know, of course, they had to do everything before they sell the vehicle. But now everything is now falling onto me. And I was like, oh, yes. So I did uh, – I had I actually had him do um, – <clears throat> Uh, the cabin air filter, which, amazing, tremendous difference. Uh, turned on the vents, and it's just fresh air coming out of there. So, note to everybody out there. You got to change the cabin air filter at least once a year. And I will tell you, my Subaru had a nest in it. Um, my, my Outback, it was just a dirty filter. Um, but you got to change the cabin air filter in your car. Uh I mean, just think about that. All the air that you're pulling from outside is supposed to be filtered through this before it comes into your cabin. So change out that filter. If you don't know how, have somebody do it for you. Um, but it's something that I do every year regularly. And it's a tremendous, tremendous difference, um, you know, get, give it, getting a uh, new cabin air filter in the car. So had that done, super happy with the amount of fresh air that I'm getting now. You can smell the difference in the vehicle. It, it is tremendous. It just is. I can't describe it any other way. Um, but I did full synthetic on the engine, got that all switched out, and now she's purring like a kitten. Uh, my gas mileage went down, but that's because we're warming up the vehicles. This is... I had to tell myself this because I'm like, how did I go from 19.8, almost, I think it was about 20 miles per gallon, down to 19.2? 
Well, I start my vehicle and I let it run from anywhere from six to ten minutes uh, before I get into it uh, so I can have a nice warm car, right? So, I mean, it's got to warm up anyways. You got to warm up your car. It's never good to get in an ice cold car and just start driving. All your fluids are, they're not frozen, but it's not good for them to work like that. Your, your fluids should be warmed up so that everything works the way it's supposed to, so nothing's being forced, and you're not putting stress on anything. Um, so I don't care about the burn-up of the gas. Uh, I, I'd rather have everything in the car warmed up so that she just drives normally you know what I mean smoothly I don't want to I don't want to take the chance of something going wrong because I didn't warm up the car so uh I will take the hit on the gas for that for now and I mean we got two months left before winter's over technically less than two months at this point since the 21st I guess the 21st uh of um March will be uh you know spring so we're getting there. We still got February to get through, which is like the worst fucking month uh, ever. So we'll get we'll get through it. Winter's always brutal. The cold has been really, really cold lately. Like, I mean, the wind. It's always the wind that gets me. The wind just cuts through you right down to your bones. And you're like, doesn't matter how many layers you have on. You're just like, oh, my God, get me inside. Get me inside. But... So, John, uh, so I had the car, uh, oil change done, tire rotation, you know, all the little maintenance things to get it uh, prepped and ready uh, for another, uh, well, he said about forty five to 5,000 miles, which made me happy because my, my Subaru, I mean, uh, I mean, having to carry around a quart of oil every month and go through that quart of oil every month after having an oil change done was a headache. So I was I was like, I when am I supposed to give this thing an oil change? What do you think I should do? I'm like, I'm so used to having to check it every single day. I'm, I'm telling you, every day I had to check that Subaru for uh, its oil levels. And... I was like, I don't have to do that anymore, do I? And he's like, no, you don't have to do that anymore. Once we do this, everything should be fine. I was like, okay, well, I pulled up the dipstick. Can you see if Honda did it right? And he's like, yeah, Honda did it right. Uh, uh, your oil looked normal. Um, it, it, it was the proper amount that should have come out. I was like, I am just so petrified of uh, the oil burning up. Because I was like, for a year and a half... I drove a vehicle that just burned the fuck out of oil, and now my mind thought is it, this happens all the time. I'm never going to, but I don't have to. I got a decent oil filter. I probably didn't get the best oil in the world, but, I mean, it was a Vaveline. Um, I felt that that was really, uh, uh, I love Vaveline. I've been using Vaveline in all my cars for a long, long time, uh, but now I'm using, uh, I think this one was called, uh, like, Extra Protection, because uh, they didn't have the high mileage that I normally use. Um, but, I mean, you go and try and find oil today. It's tough. Uh, there's, there's, I mean, at Walmart, mostly empty shelves. I mean, it's it's crazy. Um, you know, I, I think that, I, th I, I just, I think it's crazy. I don't understand what is going on uh, in the world today. But let me tell you, it was tough to find uh, a, a five quart and a one quart that matched at least Saturday morning uh, when I was picking this up uh, to 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 give it to my guy and have the oil change. So, but now I reset all the computers uh, in the car. Had to watch a video on that, um, and uh, yeah, now I'm starting from scratch. Fresh oil change. Uh, spring comes. We're going to do a full tune-up, spark plugs, wires, uh, filters, whatever else, top off all the fluids, maybe flush a few things out, uh, and just get everything to where I like it to be. You know, this is what I do to every vehicle I've ever owned. 
If I own it, I dig into it and I replace everything that I can replace. Um, just normal wear and tear shit um, because now I know when it was replaced. So, and plus spark plugs and wires should be replaced. You know, it's got 120,000 miles on it. When I bought it, it was 117 or 118, sorry. Um, but you got to do these things in order for uh, the car to live. Like, you can't keep using the same spark plugs, you know. When you change a headlight, change them both. Change them both, all right? That's going to really, really help you. You have to remember... If you're changing out one, you got to change out the other because if one went, the other one is not far behind, right? And that goes for everything. Um, I will say that uh, my guy found a small humming on the driver's side, which makes me very sad because if you don't know what that is, could be a wheel bearing. Um, which is fine. I mean, I replaced both wheel bearings on the Outback. I, I replaced both wheel bearings on the Legacy. So why not replace both wheel bearings on the Infinity? And you got to remember, it's over 120,000 miles. So that's typically when these things break. This is not out of the ordinary. It's unfortunately just normal wear and tear. I will say that the Outback was cheaper than the Legacy, uh, so I don't know what the Infinity is going to cost for bearings, uh, for the wheel bearing, um, but the Legacy was the entire uh, hub. So it had the, uh, uh, the, lug, the lug nut studs um, on there. Like, it was the whole, the whole unit. And you just rip out the old unit and pop this one in. It wasn't just a regular pop out some bearings and put them back in. Uh, so those were way more expensive. So if it's on that level, um, then I'm just going to do one at a time, um, you know, because I have no idea what it's going to cost. I mean, I think the legacy was like uh, 90 to 110 bucks uh, per wheel bearing. Um, so we'll see what this one is. I'm hoping that these ones are just packed in there and he can just unpack them and we just get the wheel bearings, which are like 20, 30 bucks. Um, uh, and then I'll just do both sides at the same time. It might as well just, just rip them all out and replace all of them. And now I don't have to think about wheel bearings for another hundred thousand miles Sunday. Uh, let's see all the normal shit that I normally do. And then. Uh, we found out, well, I didn't find out. I had to call my sister, but my niece's party is is next Sunday. I thought it was this Sunday. So I'm like, oh, we got to get going. And Excuse me. And I called my sister, and she's like, that's not till next Sunday. And I was like, oh, good. All right. So we sat around, and uh, she's been watching this show in the dark. About a blind person that gets in with drugs. Um, so she was watching that. Uh, she got into another show. She gets into a lot of shows. I don't have time to watch that much TV. Uh, and that's probably my own fault, my own doing. But it's for good reasons. I'll have plenty of time to watch TV later on in life. I definitely believe that. But uh, what was it? Uh, we finished up... Um, Afterlife. Afterlife on Netflix. Now, that, I thought, was really good. We watched all three seasons. They're like 24 minutes an episode. Um, I, thought it was, I thought it was really, really good. And I found out, as we were finishing up the third season, that that was the final season. So, if you want to check it out, uh, I, I recommend it. I thought it was funny. I thought it was pretty good. I was actually like, oh, good. I can't wait till this comes back. And that's when she's like, no, this is it. They did three seasons and it's over. And then after that, uh, we watched, uh, oh, oh, the new season of Ozark. Now, what, what I will say is that 
the new season is seven episodes. But it also says season four, part one. And that is seven episodes. All the rest of the seasons have 10 episodes. So my assumption is that there's going to be three more episodes and it's probably going to be a season four part two. I don't know how this is going to turn out. I have a vague idea right now. Uh, We finished episode four last night, so we got three to go. Um, But, I mean, if you haven't checked out Ozark yet, go and check it out. It is absolutely fucking incredible. I love it. I think it's just a great, great show. All the actors, actresses, they all do phenomenal. Um, I'm always blown away with how things go down. And, of course, things are getting crazy. And then I was like, well, this can't happen. And then I went, oh, shit. This can happen because this is it. So expect the unexpected because if this is the end of the show, which it is, uh, obviously part two will be the absolute end of it. But, I mean, anybody could die. Anybody could, Anything could happen. Because the show's not coming back. So they just have to close on whatever they're doing. And they don't have to come back to it at all. They just close on that and move on to the next. So without giving anything away, no spoiler alerts. I don't even know actors and actresses' names. But the guy that plays the dad is just phenomenal. The mom's awesome. The sister is great. Uh, you know, the, 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 the little brother is... Uh, it, I think in the last season or the season before, maybe one, be two or three, uh, it's like the the brother was the good one and the sister was the bad one, and now it's flipped, you know. And I love when they do that with characters, you know. But Ozark, check it out. There's going to be a total of four seasons, and it seems like season four is going to be a part one, part two. Um, you know, and I, I would check that out. That's, that's a great, great show. I, I'm so glad I got into that, but I'm also so sad it's leaving us. <coughs> and then I just, uh, you know, finished out the night, got a bunch of stuff done for today. And then I woke up this morning an hour late. So as you can see, I'm on a great I don't know. I'm a, my track record for getting up this week on time completely failed. And that is my own fault. I have got to get better at what I'm doing. But I woke up an hour and 10 minutes late today. Rushed downstairs, take care of the dogs, get all my shit done, uh, get everything ready. And I felt pretty good because... By the time I needed to be leaving and heading to class this morning at PMA in Derry, New Hampshire, I was there. I was like three minutes later than I normally am. And that's not bad because that's still 15 minutes before we get on the mats. Yeah, still 15 minutes before we get on the mats. So not too bad. I mean, I could have beat, I, I could have, you know, be- done better. I could have done better. I could have been there on time. Um, but it was a great class. And this time, we're, we were working on what we do best. And I was like, oh, my God, what do I do best? I'm like, because normally it's we're going to work whatever you're not, whatever you're struggling with is what we want to work on. Or here's a new one. Here's a new one. Uh, you can implement this into your game. And today, Professor was like, you know what? I want everybody to do what they do best. And I was like, no shit. This is going to be interesting. So uh, we get in guard, and you got to get out of guard and go into a submission. Whatever submission you do best. And I have to say, I I'm, I don't know if it's the best best thing that I do, but I went straight to, uh, arm and head choke. And I was like, is this what I do best? 
Or is this all I could think of from beginning to end without making it look like I, you know what I mean? I'm like, I just want to look like I know what I'm doing. I always want to look like I know, know what I'm doing. Same thing with this podcast. I'm like, I, I guess I could pretend all day that I know what I'm doing, but I mean, I don't, I don't. So I found it to be really funny. I don't know if it was like the easiest thing I could do or whatnot. I, I don't know why I picked it. It is definitely a move I've been doing for a long time. And maybe it is my go-to, but I don't use it regularly, if that makes any sense to anybody. So he asked us to work on what was our best. I do my move. I do the head and arm choke. And I was like, oh, wow. And I also, it brought me back to uh, when I went over to my friend's house. Um, he had some mats down in his garage a long time ago. And I went over there, and we, we were rolling. And that's what I got him in multiple times and that's when I was a blue belt so I was like oh I bet I really have been doing this head and arm choke for a long time maybe it is what I'm best at so I was like maybe I just maybe I did it so so without thinking because it's what I'm best at so I'm, I'm gonna take it as that's what I'm best at that's why I picked it but for all of you out there, I want you to know, in my brain, I was like, I don't know. I just know how to go from guard to side control to the head and arm choke. You know what I mean? So very interesting, though, to play that uh, in my head. Like, is this, the, is this what I know the best? It's the first thing you went to, so I would have to say yes. But it was just a really nice way to... Uh, kind of change up class, you know what I mean? Um, and then, of course, he showed us uh, a couple arm bars, uh, from one from side control, and then uh, we got taught a knee bar, um, which is definitely pretty fucking cool, um, going from De La Hiva into knee bar. You know, that's also how you can take the back from De La Hiva. I'm starting to feel more comfortable with De La Hiva, and... Another reason I'm using this knee over toes guy is because whenever I do a De La Hiva, I feel like my knee is going to burst. It is on either side. It's very uncomfortable. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, a De La Hiva is, well, it's, it's a, um, it's a hook. Okay, De La Hiva is a hook, and the way you do it is your back's on the ground, your hips are up, You, this is the person's leg here, and you wrap your leg around, and then your toes go up, and it goes on the inside, so your toes are like on the inside of their thigh, so you're really wrapping, and then your body would be shifted enough but every time I do it, my knee pops, cracks, whatever. I don't know why. I wish I had a reason for it. Maybe it's my age. Maybe it's the fact that I haven't taken care of my body in a long since forever. And now I want to take care of my body. And it's like, well, we've already got to do damage, blah, 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 blah. So I felt like I feel like that's something I really need to work on. But being able to go from De La Hiva into, oh, I'm going to say this wrong. Is it Bora Bora or just a Bora roll? Uh, I'm, I apologize if that is wrong. But, you know, all the brown belts and uh, the younger generation, like, they're really into um, this uh, uh, inverted guard, right? Um, you know, where you're basically upside down. Uh, so, and they, they, they've gotten me so many times with the De La Hiva into the, uh, Bora roll. And then I get my feet sweeped out from underneath me and boom, they're taking my back. And I was like, I've got to figure this out. 
e- either I've got to figure out how to do it or I need to figure out how to defend it because this is insane. And I don't want to be in this anymore. So I've been working on it. Um, I mean, we we started working this technique over a year ago. Um, but now I'm starting to feel more comfortable with it. And I think one of the reasons why De La Hiva wasn't working for me is because I never worked it. And now I'm working it. I'm doing things with it. Um, and that's making the tremendous difference that I'm noticing So I got really excited about all that, and then we did some uh, three-minute rounds so we could get some extra partners in, really really divvy up the class and get some new partners in in case there's people there um, that come all the time, but, you know, you may not get to roll with them because we only do, like, two or three, five minutes. Um, So we did, like, I think we did five three minutes, which was great. Um, And I, I, I have to say I shocked myself, you know. I got two submissions. Um, which is amazing. It's just amazing. It does it, it. I can't express it any other way. You know, uh, it feels good. And the second one that I got was the most control I've ever had in my game ever. I mean, uh, from beginning to end, it was just, uh, is the word I'm looking for methodical, but it was just so nice. It was like, I got my grips. I got my dominant. Um, I, I, I did what I needed to. He was doing his thing. I let him do his thing. Then I, then I let the energy, uh, go where it needed to. And then, uh, by the time I know it, I'm taking the back and, um, uh, I'm gripping, you know, and he was fighting that, but I just slowly kept pushing my fist up, 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 and then I grabbed my gi, and I was like, oh, my God, this is this is really coming together. I get, I get more on my side. I put both my hooks in, and then all of a sudden, as I'm trying to get this arm under his chin, uh, he gives, he lets go of my other hand, which allows me to slide it in behind his ear, and then I was like, I'm never going to get this choke. I'm on his chin. And I was like, you got to stop. And this is stuff that I'm saying to myself, obviously. This is where I am in my head. And I'm like, you got to stop thinking this way. Just arch your back. Arch your back now. And I arched my back. And all of a sudden, that was enough for him to kind of, you know what I mean? But I wasn't choking him. But guess what? I moved my hand up. And guess where my arm went? Right underneath the chin. I was like, oh, shit. You're done. Fucking tighten that up real tight. Got the other one deep in there, and I just squeezed until he tapped. And I was like, holy shit. If you had told me that I was going to do a move from beginning to end with, not with, being relaxed, I would have laughed at you. And then it happened. So I know that I am capable of doing this all the time. I've just got to calm down. I've got to breathe. And then it's all going to come together. Just like they keep telling me, that's how this works. And I was on cloud nine this morning. You know, I was on cloud nine. I was like, yes. Um, I head home. Tyler meets me here. We have a long discussion on all kinds of COVID shit. Some of it I kind of want to get into on today's podcast if I have enough time. And then uh, I showed him some stuff because we were doing some newer things. Uh, and I got I, I got a mat at the house, and it was awesome. I threw it down in the kitchen, and boom, we're, we're just trying shit out. Nice four-by-six mat. Uh, you know, I think they normally go for like 149 bucks. I got it for 101 um, awesome, absolutely fucking awesome to have an actual mat in my house and making it capable of doing actual moves and having actual movement. You know, there's enough room in there to do one roll before you fall off the edge, which is always enough to do some extra technique, break falls, 
all this stuff. So I was so excited to actually be able to use this. I was happy that I could show him a few things. Um, we went over some other, a uh, couple other moves that he had some questions on that I hope I elaborated uh, correctly, which I, I believe I did. I don't, I try and if I'm questioning what I'm doing, I just stop what I'm doing. You know what I mean? If we're in class and I don't know what I'm doing, I ask the professor. But if I'm outside of class and me and Tyler are just going over stuff and he's like, well, I get here and I don't know what to do. And I'll be like, well, uh, yeah, I don't know what to do either. Write it down. Let's ask the professor. You know what I mean? So I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm showing him shit that or I'm showing him shit incorrectly. Um, it's definitely stuff that I've worked on myself and I understand the moves. Um, so I like to help him out with that. And I don't know why I had to clarify that. We were just doing a smash pass and he was not smashing me at all. It was super funny. I'm like, dude, dude, put my knee into my face. And he's like, what? <laughs> so anyways, it was really, really fun to be able to play on the mat today. Uh, when I got to my house, I could uh, to show him shit and go over things. That was amazing. Um, and I love the mat that I got. I mean, uh, I definitely would like another one. Um, that cause they have Velcro on them too. So you can add multiple mats together. Um, but that'll be for the future, you know, and then I'll have a, I'll have an eight by 12, um, mat. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, get two of those. And then you can throw those out on the lawn. I mean, they're great for everything. It's pretty awesome. Like I could definitely use that mat outside, you know? So I am excited uh, to see where this spring and summer takes me, uh, especially with my jujitsu. Um, I want to get some stuff going, you know, I want to do some stuff in my house. Um, and then, um, that's it. I'm here. <clears throat> and look at that. That's a whole hour that went by. I don't have any current events today. I don't have, uh, much of anything else. I wasn't even sure where I was really going today. Um, but yeah, so thank you everybody, um, you know, for, for watching, listening, subscribing, uh, it, it means the world to me and it really keeps me coming back here week after week. So thank you to all my subscribers out there, uh, rate, review and share. Um, if you're new to the podcast, remember to subscribe. That's right. You watching, listening. Whatever you're doing, hit that subscribe button. It's the one thing I really want you to do, okay? I won't ask anything of you, but if you do want to get more involved with the podcast, set those alarms so that you know when all the episodes upload. Of course, uh, share, rate, review, and leave comments in that comment section, all right? If you want to get even more involved with the podcast, T-A-L-K-I-N with Topher at gmail.com. That's talking with Topher at gmail.com. You got a question, send it on over to the email. All right, T A L K I N with Topher at gmail.com. That's talking with Topher at gmail.com. And I'm on social media Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. I'm on there every week, almost all week, trying to give you content throughout the week. Uh, again, that's Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. And. I just hope everybody out there has an amazing Thursday. I do not know what the weather's bringing as of right now. We could be in the middle of snow. It could be super cold. Stay warm. Hope you have a great rest of your weekend. And as always, I will talk to you later. <laughs>